To introduce myself, I am Peter Sherwin from Eurotherm and I look after marketing and heat treat business development. This webinar is titled MS 2750E is not just a re regulatory standard, practical ways of using MS 2750E to benefit your business. We're going to explore meaningful quality data to aid business performance and look at how MS 2750E can help you to have a decent level of quality in your data. This is a little different to my usual presentations and is aimed more at the end user of instrumentation and decisions they have to take about the quality of their data. We will start by looking at data source and its validity, then look at data types and quality and then practical ways of using AMS 2750E to ensure you have quality data. Let's start by looking at data and how confident we are about the information we see every day on a heat treat shop floor. Given this information displayed on a furnace instrument with a temperature reading of 289 degrees, how confident are you that this is the actual temperature seen by the parts being processed? Well, I suggest we need to ask some questions. What is the thermocouple type? The position within the furnace, is this detecting the right temperature? When was it last changed? What is the calibration accuracy? Are correction factors added? Do you have a proper connection to the instrument, the correct lead wire and connector type, limiting potential errors? What is the accuracy of the cold junction compensation and the instrument input accuracy? When was the instrument last calibrated and what was the accuracy recorded? Any offsets used within the instrument? Assuming the above is all OK, we still need to know whether the conversion of millivolt to temperature scale is precise. If we know this process is NADCAP accredited, and follows the rules of AMS 2750E, how confident are we now that the temperature is real? I would suggest we now have a higher confidence in this temperature reading. In my early days as a heat treater, this was brought home to me by an F1 racing team. The customer audited my process and questioned our confidence level of temperature measurement. We were currently working to the intent of BS to M54, uh, before my time with the AMS 2750 specification. He was very rigorous in his auditing and it really did help my operation pick up its quality performance which then led to a direct business improvement. It wasn't a surprise to me that later in life this auditor became an ADCAP auditor. If we look at some statistics, it's amazingly effective of poor data. Generic research indicated that between 10 to 25 percent of total company revenues can be taken up with dealing with bad data. That's an incredible waste of money. If AMS 2750E can help avoid this level of expense, then there is huge benefit to the business. Bad data equals bad decisions. Not many can argue with this statement. So before we move on to some detail about AMS 2750E, let's have a quick look at data quality and data types. This is a typical definition for high quality data. Yes, it's linked to database records typically used for CRMs and similar products. However, we will use these common terms to discuss AMS 2750E and data quality. So for an, a heat treat example, Complete might be no gaps in process data. Accurate, a true record of the temperature measured. Available, how to access both real-time and historical process data. Timely, full information when you need it. For example, do you know a TUS is passed or failed as soon as it ended? This potentially could save time uh, through a misstep of heating it back up for production when you need to potentially resurvey. There's lots of current news about big data, but does this apply to heat treat? Example of a, a quick big data story. 
My wife and I are finally catching up and watching the Netflix US version of House of Cards. Apparently, Big Data was used in order to give the series the best chance of success. Netflix dived in into and mined the petabytes of information. A petabyte is equivalent to a, a million gigabytes to give them information on the most popular series type, which was po uh, political thrillers. The most popular director and also the most popular actor, Kevin Spacey. Uh, just by the by, he's also one of my favorite actors. But in Heat Tree, we don't have as much data, typically in the megabytes or gigabyte range. And I would suggest we need to concentrate more on meaningful data. We should only collect and analyze relevant data, data that will ultimately be used to make decisions either by you or your customers or auditors, so process charts, etc. The analysis can help us with process control and details such as output percentages that can help lead to predictive analysis helping maintenance issues. We also need to make sure this data can be collected and presented in a format that is usable for action to be taken. If data quality is linked with business performance, how do AMS 2750E solutions help? Data accuracy is the first section to look at. This slide is a generic list of sections in the AMS 2750E standard. The equipment class specifies the temperature uniformity. Uh, the quality and accuracy of thermocouples is also prescribed. But I'm more concerned with instrument calibration because this leads to a, a larger discussion. The instrument selection is governed by the accuracy required. In AMS 2750E, this is 0.2%. In AMS 2750D, it was 0.1% at higher temperatures. This leads us to select a precision controller and recorder. This level of instrument then opens up better characteristics of control. So better noise rejection, uh, potential of multiple PID sets, overshoot inhibition, higher accuracy TUS instruments, drift control, better SAT and recording results. Over the next few slides, we'll dive into some of this detail. This is a simple chart specification for temperature uniformity. Very simply, the better the class, the tighter the temperature uniformity. Thermocouples are more accurate in certain ranges. This is why we would typically select, say, type T for sub-zero treatments, type J for low to mid-temperature ovens, type K and N for mid-temperature furnaces, maybe for carburizing neutral hardening, type R and S for high-temperature furnaces, vacuum furnaces, and the like. By the way, this screen shows a thermocouple of app, which is available both in PC format and also on the, the App Store. Let's look at noise, and more importantly, noise rejection. With a 0.2% or better accuracy instrument, then signal interference is minimized by the circuit design and choice of terminal materials. This graph shows a comparison of actual results when testing different manufacturers' products. The tight red band is the urethane result, with competitors' products illustrated by the variable green and blue signals. Generally, the 0.1 to 0.2% accurate instruments also come with advanced control strategies, including multiple PID sets. This helps you accurately tune a furnace that has different personalities at different temperatures. For example, an oven with a single burner for low temperatures and multi-burner for high temperatures, the control characteristics will change with temperature. Vacuum furnaces with low temperature convection heating compared to high temperature radiation heating will require different PID const constants to give the most accurate performance. One of the primary issues in running a, a TUS is minimizing any overshoot in the control sensor. A properly mapped furnace with multiple TUS sensors in the extremities of the work zone will magnify a one degree overshoot in the control thermocouple by five or ten times across the TUS sensors. And this is for certain furnace setups. Using overshoot inhibition features available on higher accuracy instruments, named cutback for urotherm controllers, helps with avoiding this overshoot. This is the secret source in urotherm control and other instruments. When I first used urotherms as a customer over 15 years ago, 
I benefited from these features without even realizing what was helping me with my control accuracy. Moving to the field instruments for a TUS, these instruments are held to a higher accuracy standard of 0.1% or better. Remember, process recorders are 0.2%. Some of these units now have special CJC block built into the recorder to enable higher accuracy and provide what is termed as instant on capability. No more waiting for a recorder for 30 to 60 minutes to stabilize in ambient conditions to give you accurate results. Calibration applies equally to process instrumentation and field instruments. In process instruments, AMS specifies intervals between one month for class one furnaces to six months for class five and six furnaces. Apart from the theoretical calculations of drift, we also put our devices through laboratory tests, cycling ambient conditions over a period of time to evaluate the drift characteristics. Ambient temperature cycling within 25 degrees Fahrenheit can lead to drift results at 60 to 70 percent of theoretical levels. Keeping a control cabinet at a constant temperature then really helps with calibration results over time. Another smart way to ensure the controller and recorder read the exact same temperature and helping SAT results is to take advantage of digital retransmission available in the higher precision controllers. What you see on the controller is what you capture on the recorder. No slight deviations due to non-digital retransmission, separate thermocouples or scaling issues. Now let's move on to the section on complete data. The next few slides illustrate the issues with missing data. It really doesn't matter how accurate your system is if you don't have a complete record of your process. A blip in the network could cause a SCADA system to provide missing results. We assume this might be the result and some SCADA systems will backfill missing data with straight lines. But what if the network blip also had an effect on the control system, shown here in a d with a dip in temperature? This could create non-conforming parts. Even with increased inspection, you might not find all the non-conforming parts, and if these get out into service, they could fail prematurely and create issues with expensive product recalls. Some ways to counteract this issue is to ensure that you capture the information at source have local memory and storage, as well as redundant methods of archiving. Now moving to the next section, data availability. Today there are more choices than ever to be able to display and view current process data at or remote from the process equipment. Controllers with better displays or large screen HMIs at the machine and for remote viewing, use of smartphones, tablets, or large screen TVs covering multiple processes. Not only do you want to see the instant process information and comparing this against set points, but you also want to be able to see trends in history. This is commonly available in most SCADA and process recorder systems. When performing TOS surveys, it is important to be able to review numerical information as well as trends. This provides useful information when needing to diagnose issues with surveys. Having multiple archiving strategies helps you never lose that critical process run. Storing the final information on server with data backup ensures the data is available for review at any time in the future. The final mini section is looking at timely data. The ability to quickly access historical information easily is very important for the quality department and production maintenance troubleshooting issues. Having a way to pull up batch data quickly available on higher end data historians is one method to provide this quick access. Excel has offered a quicker way to produce reports from data but requires manual input. Manipulation of base data is time-consuming and the accuracy is dependent on the person creating the report. 
Using pre-canned reporting software can offer the quickest way to create AMS conforming reports without needing to manipulate or disturb the virgin data. Final thoughts then. I hope this presentation has been able to detail how AMS 2750E helps to create meaningful quality data. This data truly helps the heat treat operation allowing you to sell more, spend less and build better relationships all through a consistent quality performance. I'll just break for a, a few questions if there are any before I move to a quick update on some heat treat resources. For the purposes of this uh, recorded webinar I will move straight on. So three new guides are nearly complete. Uh, they're just currently in review. Uh, one is the beginner's guide to heat treat control and this is useful for a, a new sales engineer or someone with no background to heat treat and just wants the basics. And then there are our two intermediate guides. One is understanding CQI9 version 3 and the other one understanding AMS 2750E. Just a, a quick sneak preview of some of the information. Uh, this is the, the list in CQI9 version 3. And these are the areas as an instrument supplier that we can help out with. Uh, just quickly go through this list. So we can supply or assist the selection of calibrated thermocouples. Uh, obviously we can provide process instruments uh, to meet the accuracy requirement of the standard as well as field test systems and instruments. Help with critical spares list, uh, preventive maintenance for instrumentation, the calibration of those instruments uh, and also operated training. We also can provide input into continuous improvement, uh, particularly important for CQI9. So look at the control system, data management, TUS, SATs, and atmosphere check requirements. The ability to add alarms and check systems for management review, which is required by the standard every 24 hours, is now possible. Um, and we can aid process monitor checks and alarm tests quarterly. The data records can be complete to provide quench delay and also temper delay information uh, and report on trends over time. And then we have specific instruments like the Aerodac to support thermocouple, SAT and TUS management. Okay, I uh, hope the webinar was useful um, and thank you all very much for listening. Take care, bye-bye.